sound is working, but the video is not. That's just how it goes. It, uh, I, I can't catch a break, but um, I mean, I shaved my head and everything for this. Put on a nice shirt, but you know, you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> okay. Um, fine, let me just take this tie off because you can't see it anyway. I don't understand why it keeps flaking out on me. No, nope. all right. So, uh, welcome to the illustration block of uh, CG Spectrum's Twitch channel. I am your your host with the most, uh, the most or the lack, the host with the. Uh, the least amount of OBS skills you've ever seen in your life. Um, <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is the digital illustration thing. So, all right. Uh, what I'm going to do today, and if, if you are a student at uh, CG Spectrum, this photo reference has been dropped into the General DigiPaint uh, for, your, uh, for your use. And... Uh, so what I'm going to do today is just play around with the idea of composing a a, a rough composition uh, around uh, you know, an established and a pre-existing photo reference. Because usually uh, you might have uh, when you're doing a, a a piece for your own purposes. Um, it might be hard to find good reference, or you might be just making something up, uh, and you know you don't have proper lighting, you don't have uh, friends that have bulging biceps, or you might, but they might not want you to photograph them because they think it's weird. Um, but when you make up stuff, it it shows and it's always great to have good solid photo reference um, but sometimes you might go through a, a stock site or um, or one of those gumroad uh, sites where they have uh, photo packages photo reference packages photo packs and those are all uh, copyright free or not all but maybe some of them are you have to check the the listings or the the rights the usage rights for those things but uh, a lot of them for students are copyright free and uh, free to use uh, for your own portfolio purposes and that stuff is is put up there uh, you know, somebody takes the time to put that out there for a reason because there's so many people that just want to make it up and they have no real solid understanding of anatomy, but they they pride themselves on saying, "Look what I could do," and uh, it's terrible. So we're gonna I'm gonna use this as my jump off point and uh, play around with. Let's say I'm gonna do a horizontal composition. Let's try a horizontal. We'll do this. Let's see. Luis, hey, all right. So uh, I don't know where my face went on the uh, picture in picture, but you don't need to see see me. Which is as long as you can hear me, because this has been a nightmare uh, for me since moving into my new place, having this uh, HVAC unit 
like directly behind me, but I was just told if you uh, use your sultry voice and talk directly into the mic, my, the microphone is pressed like right up against my face and uh, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's uh, very uncomfortable, but I figure if I just jam it right next to my eyeball, everything will be okay. All right. So, um, I'm thinking, like, this guy, yes, those are toilet paper rolls in his hands, um, Luis, just in case you were wondering. Um, I didn't have fancy control sticks or anything like that that I could put in his hands, so, um, toilet paper rolls work just fine. Maybe it was a paper towel roll I cut in half. Yeah, let's go with that. All right. Uh... So working out a sketch or something like this would start off as simply as just blocking in the character. And I'm I'm trying to I'm I'm thinking I would like to go for some kind of uh Voltron, giant mech cockpit kind of vibe uh, for this. And if anybody has any ideas for what they would like to him to be fighting, or uh, like maybe we maybe we show a little bit of that cockpit. Like maybe we, we play around with what might be out here. Uh, Maybe this is some outer space environment, or uh, maybe it's a spaceship or something like that. But for right now, I just want to play around with the idea that this guy is, is here. This. In, his, in his space suit. I mean, this doesn't necessarily have to be science fiction. You can make that make this image into anything if you use your imagination i'm just gonna go with what i know and put him in a space suit and a, a giant robot cockpit Oh, I don't have any, uh, getting that look. Absolutely.
Anyway, before I uh, almost lost my mind over my brushes, brush lag, uh, tell me where every, uh, whoever's watching, tell me where you're from. Uh, you're a student, you are a potential student. Oliver, yes. Hey, man, I wanted to uh, uh, bring bring your bring your demon book project with you. Uh, upload that to the uh, to the server. You're not done, man. <laughs> You're not done. Uh, I got some more for you. You're like, oh my god, I thought it was done. No, no, no. You're not. It's it's a small little nitpicky thing, but. Um, all of my students know it's all about the nitpicky things. Uh, Luis will, uh, he'll account for that. I'm always going, one more thing. Thing. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So, this is the kind of work I would typically put, if you, if whoever's watching this, if you've watched this stream, when it is uh, on any kind of consistent basis, uh, you notice that uh, I bounce around from looser sketches to more finished portraiture so like something like this is what i would the level of finish i would typically do for uh like a book cover or something like that like a just a sketch stage just to just to get the ideas out of my head i'm not worried about anatomy as much as i would be if um if I were going into the final piece. So, um, but I still want to try to get the structural stuff in there. And let's say, what do I do with him? Squint.
And if anybody has any uh, questions or art-related questions um, or anything like that, uh, please feel free to uh, drop a note in the chat. Otherwise, I am uh, going to just play around with this for a little bit. So I don't know if I'm dating myself here, but there was a graphic novel. I'm probably out of myself by even saying the name of the graphic novel. The graphic novel called um, Dark Knight Returns, um, a Frank Miller comic. And if you're at all familiar, this comic had this moment in it where you could see the interior of um the batmobile and it was like kind of like a battle tank and um so you know you see the age aging batman sitting in this huge tank with like all these control panels and stuff like that all around him and uh it was just so cool got this like targeting lens on his eye I mean I guess for copyright reasons or whatever rules which has I can't just call up that reference um trust me it's cool so uh I'm gonna go with something like that around the edges of this but then maybe toss in some little holograph display or something Hmm. Luis, you have a second account, or is this a different Luis? Oh no, it's a second account. Okay. Hey man. So we have a green light in the reference. Do you ever work from or just wing it? Uh, at this stage, I'm just winging it because it's more important to me to get a a composition, uh, just a like a rough comp down, so that I can play with the colors and, and all that stuff. And I'm really just eyeballing it. I mean, I've done it enough to know. If it's just wildly off or not um, but what you'll see me doing while I'm doing something like this is 
playing with it? Do I want him to forward? Do I want the weight of the image to be uh, you know, all of the control panels? I, mean, I could even probably scale this down a little bit. So I could get more of the environment junk around him in there. Um, but yeah, I'm trying. So I see this green light in here, and I'm trying to think of what would be causing that light source. I mean, it, I don't have to have like a big green light right there in the piece. That's not necessary, but it could be a light source off camera somewhere over here. Um, but there is this really, or there is this really great sci fi illustrator, Steve Hickman. He does these really awesome claustrophobic looking uh like sci-fi cockpits where there's like the character is just just crammed in there it's all kinds of machinery and parts and stuff just overlapping uh every square inch of it so that's kind of the kind of the um very much inspired by that industrial look from the Aliens franchise or the Alien movie. So like the Ridley Scott films where it's just, you know, every, every, every seat, every cockpit on the bridge just had this, uh, this epic feeling to it. Like just this endless control everywhere. I mean, they carried that through into uh, Prometheus. Any of you have ever seen that film? But they replaced a lot of it with hollow displays. Uh, so, you know, doing that mashup of the old and the new here. See that? Not trying to be super original. <laughs> In a two hour stream. Follow, okay, so following Oliver's question, what would you suggest beginners do? Do you ever have to work at, ever work out perspective reference to you? Well, all right, so that answer, I answered the first part of that. When I'm just doing a sketch like this, I'm winging it. But uh, when I'm actually, like, let's say I did this piece and the sketch and I work out the full color scheme and, and everything and it's it's uh exactly what the client wants and, and all that. Um then I go about trying to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. So if I didn't have reference for this character, um then that would be the next step is to get reference. Um but like this isn't exactly uh a high or a low angle this is just a this is just a straight on almost eye level shot i mean i'm crouched down when i was taking this picture but i'm uh it's not a forced perspective or anything like that where i'm looking up or down at the character it's still eye level um but so i'm taking that understanding into the piece into this sketch here and saying okay well we are, our camera view of this moment is looking dead on at this character. Um, I mean, would this be a more dynamic composition if the entire thing were this? And here, and then 
you're controlling stuff. And then you have like displays and junk down here. It's nothing but dashboards, button. I mean, yeah, sure. But I didn't think of that first. I thought of this one. I got lazy. And I just grabbed this reference. So, <laughs> um, but the next step would be to gather reference for the character, um, figure out what your environment's going to be, whether it's an uh, interior or exterior shot, and making sure that the perspective on the character matches up with the environment and that character feels like they fit in that environment. Um, you know, through use of light and value, color, and just making sure your horizon lines and all that stuff, all your perspective is more or less correct. Um, but, you know, when you're dealing with a close-up shot of a head or head and shoulders or things like that, you can fudge the perspective as long as the narrative, as long as the overall story you're trying to tell uh, comes through. Because it doesn't matter as much if you're like you could nail the perspective, nail the lights and your lighting and your values and everything dead on, but boring piece with no story. And it doesn't matter how well you painted it. So that's that's just real. I mean I I'm I'm really picky about stuff like that especially when people um like i know oil painters that they show off how well they can render something but their stuff is just boring to look at you know there was really no thought that went into the composition or the narrative of the piece it's just look at how well i can paint a deer you know or <laughs> or whatever it is um but but yeah, I mean, you've seen dramatic poses like this in movies or in, especially in anime. Oh my God. If there isn't like 20 shots of something like this in anime, this is probably like the opening, like the intro scene of an, uh, some kind of Voltron or Robotech or, um, um, excuse me, Macross, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you know, film and you know, you got your spaceships flying in the background and whole cockpit of this dude's ship, right? There's that whole feel. And then, like, after that, the whole piece is pretty much, the composition's done. And then you can, dang, I kind of like this way better than my reference. All right, so. <laughs> All right, let's, let's scrap this. Uh, let's scrap this guy and we'll just go ahead with the one we were just making up. Um, and yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. It's, uh, this feels way more dynamic and looks like it would be much more fun to, to bring to a finish. And, uh. I mean, I just, I just know personally, I just know that there are anime films that I watched as a kid where I saw this kind of composition a thousand times. It popped up a lot in Macross Plus, Super Dimensional Fortress Macross, Macross 2, Project Echo, Gunbuster. Like, a lot of cartoons that probably people that are listening to this now probably weren't even born when they came out, but I don't know. You tell me. Some people go, well, if Naruto's not in it, it's not anime. God.
Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, Escaflon. I've Escaflone. Uh, I've got the entire collection. I've got the entire collection. I, <laughs> I never made it past. Oh man, I mean, I bought the entire series. I never made it past like episode three. I just could not wrap my brain around there being giant mechs in like the Middle Ages or whatever. I don't know if it was supposed to be on Earth, but I just couldn't wrap my brain around it like giant mechs with swords. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's kind of like you're either going to have cherry pie, you're either going to have cake or you're going to have pie. Right? You don't mash them together. Right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it will, I guess visually it will look good, but it's just something not right. You either want one or the other. Does that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't like my sci fi mixed too much with my fantasy. Oh, okay, right. So it's a parallel, right. So same thing. So it's a parallel universe where there are giant mechs in <laughs> the Middle Ages and you just go, ah, okay, but whatever. Yeah, I've seen it. I, um, oh my God, where's all my ants? Oh, they're in storage. That's right. <sighs> all right. So let me... So for you CG Spectrum students that are maybe just tuning in and watching this, I completely, totally abandoned this reference that I had posted on the gen in the general DigiPaint. So, uh, you know, use it as you will. Uh, I'm not going to go forward with it. I'm going to have a little fun with something else. I wish I could play the soundtrack to Project Echo right now. Don't want the law coming down on me. Whenever I do a sketch for uh, my own personal piece or something, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but there's, there's always something in my brain saying, give him a mohawk, give him a mohawk. And I never do because I go, mohawks are dated. They're in that very 1980s and nobody's walking around with mohawks anymore. 
And then the other part of my brain goes, so what? Give him a mohawk. Um, does that ever happen to you guys? Well, not particularly for the mohawk part, but uh, space mohawk. You see, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, Lindley, yeah. All right. Space mohawk it is. So... Because society and good fashion sense, screw it, right? Are we allowed to say screw it? Uh, I'm making it legal. Yeah. Space Mohawk. The main character of your comic of has a space Mohawk. That's what it's all about, man. All about. This guy is just having a blast, just shooting aliens in space in his fancy fighter jet mech thing, right? Put some gloves on him, say the actual control stick. Buttons on it. Um, trick. And we can totally play up that force perspective feel. Oh, and uh, this goes out to all my illustration students, whoever's watching. If you're not making sound effects while you're painting your thing, you're not doing it right, all right? You need to be having so much fun that you are making howling sounds, <laughs> screaming, making little laser blast sounds, and it should just roll out, you know, like nobody is listening. Um, because if stuff like that happens, then you know that you are having a blast, that you are having a good time doing what you love. All right? So don't let anybody say, why are you in there making noises? I'm like, don't worry about what I'm doing. Like, go watch Jeopardy or something. Leave me alone. And like this, the, the fun part of designing stuff like this is that you can sit here and play with what the, co the cockpit or the controls are going to be and look like. That stuff is... Um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Luis. Absolutely. Like, uh, like this reference over here, this, this guy with the toilet paper in his hands, um, I must have sat in front of that painting, the actual illustration job, just sh making shouting. Oh, all that like, over and over again. Um, and, and a, like a large part of that is because when you're doing this kind of work, uh, you almost have to be an actor. You have to, you have to be, um, you have to put yourself in that moment, right? So that it feels authentic and... Sometimes you might have to photograph yourself as a, uh, for reference 
And if you know how to emote, it's even better. The worst thing in the world is, is having friends come over or, or finding people to use as reference for your illustrations and they not know how to use their face. I need you to look angry and then they just stare at you blankly, right? And then you've got to say stuff to them like, imagine if I keyed your car. How would you look if I, if I keyed your car? And then they give you this expression. You go, that's what I need. Just hold that for like a second. <laughs> but if you just say, look angry, maybe they can't do it. So if you can find friends that can emote, so important. Keep them. Keep them happy. Make them cookies. All right? So if you ever need them, they'll come over for cookies. You don't have to pay. Find friends for reference that you don't have to pay, that have muscles and aren't. Can you say fugly on uh, Twitch? Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to say it today. <laughs> leave your, uh, leave your, uh, your, your ugly friends at home. Don't call them for your illustrations. Unless they're like background characters. Hmm. All right, he's got one arm. Yeah. Luis is like, I got the liquefied tool. I'm good. <laughs> All are welcome. <laughs> it's just reference. I'm going to massage that reference into whatever I need. Yep. <laughs> so I'll start playing around with some lighting in this in a second, but I want to figure out what this cockpit situation looks like behind him. Go with arc something here. Put my hollow display, right? Put my grids. This could all displays. I don't know. go with. Hmm. Curve. Kind of curve a little. Hollow. Did we all say ooh at the same time? I knew we did. I know you did. Yep. Space Mohawk. Space gloves. Going uniform coat thing. Little logo. Uniform thing. Design. I don't know how to draw a piece. I don't know. I'll just do a space thing. And.
so we'll put some kind of wrist gauntlet space time piece Apple Watch thing on his wrist, right? Because he's got to track his got to track his uh, his steps, right? Step count. Not what he counts as kills. He needs Jordy's visor now for navigation. Ah, get out of here with that. No visors. He's not blind. Nope. No. It's just going to be... He's just going to be cool. Displays all around him. Touch screens. And buttons. Well, no buttons. It's all going to be touch. Touch screen. So what's going on behind this guy? You say the maybe there's an explosion. Uh, I don't know. That's eh, too. That's too. Return of the Jedi Death Star explosion. I don't want. I don't want that. Oh, it's Lando. Ugh. Um, give me some suggestions, peoples. Um, full hardcore battle scene with laser beams and stuff, or uh, what? Space battle, eye patch. Hmm. How about a planet or moon with ships coming from a space? Hmm. Giant space squid. Very 1950s. Planet horizon with the sun coming. Ooh. Did we all collectively say ooh? Like that? And that's the fun part about just coming up with random sketches in your sketchbook. Uh, you know, when you don't have a prompt is you could just draw something for fun and then ask yourself, what is happening? What happened? What is about to happen? Right? So we have this character. Not, he's not, he doesn't look mad. He doesn't look upset. He looks like he's enjoying himself. So maybe we have, maybe it's a race. A race on a, hmm. Okay, stay with me here, Oliver. What if, what if the horizon, if the, that's the sun, one of the sun, other ship, Let the entire piece be upside down. Like, we're looking at this. Here's the other cockpit. Ship. Jet. Across looking thing, right? Ah, he's upside down. Yeah. Having a blast. Just showing off. Ooh, could there be a... <laughs> I was going to say, like... Old cup of coffee. <laughs> it's just 
Just splattering out. No, I don't. That would just that would just be a mess because there's gravity. Um. No, that's fun. I don't want that line straight in his face like that. I don't know. I like the bisecting like that. Oh, one of those, uh, oh yeah. You know what? Don't tempt me, man. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Be like, did you, is that what, did you draw this on your Twitch stream the other day? Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And the skirt just came all the way up. It was a student's idea. I'm just, you know, I've got to keep the students happy, right? All right, so let's put all these uh, lumbar adjustment buttons in here. Engine bits and stuff. Uh, say that the piece will crop the piece right stand it so since we're dealing with this kind of forced perspective feeling for the image um Like, I can just have some fun with, with all of that. And... I don't know. All right, so that's one option. Let's, let's, let's keep that in the back burner. I want to go with the giant squid thing, too. Oh, gotta watch this dude's face. You know what I should do? That, like, none of you eagle-eyed uh, folks called me out on yet? Is that I have not saved this image. I saved. Uh, the buttons of this would all switches and stuff. Put some retro in there to balance out all this touchpad. Then how big is this cockpit? How big are we saying this? Is this all hollow display around him? Like showing? Or are we, do we want to go something more with confines like actual glass dome kind of feel that's why i tell my students it's like 
you've got to be a director, a cinematographer, concept artist, and a painter, illustrator. Because you've got to design it, you've got to direct the actors, you've got to come up with a narrative, and you've got to light it, and you have to paint it. So I'm kind of just trying to figure that out all, all at once, live. Live for your viewing pleasure. Um, and figure out, like, do I want the facial expression to be happy? Do I want him to be angry? I think, I think there's enough brooding people in sci-fi. It's be different for just a dude to just be enjoying himself, right? That's what I'm going to say. I like that. He's just got his license. About to be revoked. I could put like the words danger zone like in the display just because it's like a geeky Tom Top Gun reference. Oh, what is that song? Uh, you know the one I'm talking about from Top Gun? Oh. That guy's name. I'm terrible at terrible at names. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danger Zone. But like sci-fi it up, right? But alright, so let's play with this. We got one, two. Right. Turn this one off because more. So that's the piece, right? But let's duplicate this and play around with it. Um <laughs> Um <laughs> yeah that's funny I was almost gonna make a Star Wars episode one uh, Anakin the fighter pilot for a comment but that to myself. I just want to play around with composition at this point. Because from here, I have a pretty good idea of what it is I want to draw. Just want to be sure that. Um, I 
I just want to be sure that the angle that I had it, I think I would rotate it a bit. Mm. Technically, seeing. But we have something a little bit more dynamic. I do this to all my pieces. It's kind of like that last thing. Does it or does it not need a Dutch angle? And survey says it does ever so slightly we'll lean the weight of the entire composition back toward our pilot uh, keep the keep it open a little bit so here's the thing because I'm a huge Voltron fan or the the Netflix version not that original 1980s trash I said it and uh, They have this like kind of whole, I don't know, almost 180 degree field of view around them or, you know, uh, in their cockpit. So it doesn't really feel as claustrophobic as it would if they were um, in like a fighter jet kind of feel. So I might just like an X there and say, all right, that's where... The um, no light there, shadow. Yeah. So then all of our line work. All of our line work kind of swirls around this. Yeah, something like that. Do we have an additional display, hollow display? I don't know. Something like that. Ah. Like there are, there are people way better at coming up with sci-fi cockpit designs than I am and they're probably they wouldn't waste their time watching something like this or if they did it would be like some one of their friends went uh, look at this guy trying to do what you do he sucks he totally should have done it like you did it and then when you designed that stuff for Pacific Rim oh I'm sorry <laughs> I am sorry. Let's see. I want to make sure that the the arc of this. Hold on a second. Let me get my red magic marker out. I want to make sure that all of our line work flows into him. Right, so we've got this arc, this arc, this. everything is swirling back. And then it would just make sense for, it doesn't necessarily have to be a functional concept arty design at this point. It has to be a functional line that flows back into this so everything's coming down and around right back up into this
You're saying a river in the landscape or a dual. What's a dual dung? I don't know what that is. Oh, a big building? Oh, okay. Uh, or a big building. Hmm. Oh. Oh, right. So we have that contrast. Ooh. So this could totally be a full on, like, this could be a simulator. We could say this whole, there's like a, a dome around him. Ooh. All right. Okay. So let's do that then. Oh, you guys and your, your helpful tips. That's so nice. All right, so. Oh. Ooh. Ha! Could put a boat <laughs> with a sail right there. <laughs> Just. Why not, right? Have somebody like jumping out. Like he buzzed the lake. He buzzed the lake. Ah, they like diving out of their boat. Thought they was gonna get killed. Like laughing about it. Hey, check those two losers jumping out of their boat. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. <laughs> That's fun. So yeah, so then it is a complete uh, kind of uh, hollow display thing around him. Tree line. But then the value of this would have to be tree line. Neat. Thank you guys. That's cool. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So let's attack it. So are we saying sunset, sunrise, midday? What time of day are we saying this is? Um, because that is going to inform all the lighting that I do in this piece. I'll let you guys tell me. And if you're wrong, I'm just not going to choose it. And there's a right and a wrong answer here. No, there's not. It's, it's really not. It's like whatever we decide. Sunrise. Okay. Late afternoon, golden hour. Okay. So both of you chose the extremes. Uh, sunrise or sunset. Okay. So both of those are going to give me relatively the same palette, plus or minus a, a change in temperature for the shadows. All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to go. Go. Sun. Sunset. Sunrise confuses me. As far as the color. I would actually need to call up reference of that. Um, and since I can't do that with Twitch, or I can, but I have to, I have to do this. Turn that off so that you guys can't see my references. <laughs> Now, so if you are, you're a painter, digital painter, illustrator, concept artist, what? Uh, it helps to have a huge catalog, huge reference folder, full of sky photos, 
uh, you know, um, landscapes, all kinds of environments, machinery, animals, paintings, like favorite painters, all that stuff, uh, somewhere on your hard drive because, uh, Having having proper reference is just everything. I'm I'm thinking back to oh, and when you go on vacations, like take pictures of everything. Like my my here's 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 the best tip you're gonna get today. Okay, next time you go on vacation, don't be in the moment enjoying yourself with your friends, family, loved ones. Who's got time for that? Get yourself a camera or use your phone and just just take pictures of stuff that you can use for reference for your own, you know, illustration or concept design purposes. Constantly be working even when you're on vacation. I guarantee you it uh it will it, it will not come it will not backfire. All right. Trust me on that. It will not make anybody upset. No, it's genius. Genius tip. I'm not trying to find my reference for. I can actually show this reference because I took these photos and it's like. Ha ha. Okay. So I'll use that as my little bit of my palette. Right? So we'll take this and flip it. So stay in the mood. Stay in the looking for. I know I've got one that's got some sun, sunrise glows in there.
If you ever use the Blender Brush tool and sample your reference images to paint with the reference picture, if you ever use the Blender Brush tool reference images, the Blender Brush tool? You mean the Smudge tool? Is that what you're talking about? I'm not, I'm not quite sure what you mean. And what I tell my students is that there are a thousand ways to do everything in Photoshop. So you might see me doing something and say to yourself, that just seems so backwards. Why doesn't he do it this way? Um, you know, and I watch YouTube videos and I go, why in the world are they using the pen tool to do this design? That doesn't make any sense to me at all like that's just dumb but you know it's whatever it's whatever that artist is comfortable with so so Let me take a look at my references. I might switch this off to to sunset because I didn't take a lot of sunrise or early morning references because that would require me to have to get up mad early to take pictures of the sky and uh, I don't have time for that. So I tend to shoot a lot of uh, Dusk, afternoon lighting, when I know I'm awake. Oh, I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. I'll look it up. Um, I'm always interested in, in seeing what how other people play the piano. Um, but yeah. Like, I, I, I watched this one guy on YouTube as a whole thing where he just blocks in characters and designs using the lasso tool. And I just think... That's just insane, but he gets these really great results. So, and uh, he's got like 
millions of followers and I've got 23, so what do I know? <laughs> I think I've got more than 23. Maybe it's like 50. I mean, if you're watching this now on YouTube, you could maybe go over to my my YouTube channel and smash that subscribe button. Smash it. That's what they say, right? If you're not smashing the subscribe button, it's not even like you even care, right? Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, what I should probably be doing is uh, flipping this whole canvas because that's what... Uh, flip canvas, flip canvas vertical. Ah, uh, that makes so much worse. Oh, uh, stupid. I'm trying to... Oh my god, I was just plugging myself on another company's Twitch stream. Oh wait, no, you should be smashing the school's Twitch uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, that's it. Whew. Aha, dodge that bullet. <laughs>
Oh man, I indicate where his legs are. Let's do that.
So this being a first pass at this, this is the amount of time I would probably spend before moving on to another option uh, for a color sketch. There's still some stuff in here that I would probably move around and play with because uh, the the horizon, <clears throat> the upside down, you know, landscape that I have in here is reducing the value contrast around his head, which is something I figured would happen. So I would either have to uh, change the angle or completely remove the that horizon line so that I'm playing with, or I could take this, And all of this part painting. And scale it down there so that they're much higher in the sky than what was previously established. So that way we don't have anything obstructing or like his head should be carved out. So the highest point of value contrast should be around his head and not somewhere else. So and that's that's something that you know I caught I know better and I just wanted to see what it would look like, but like if the if I was dealing with a Caucasian skin tone, then this would be fine. I could just come in here and um okay. you know, come in here and basically just do that to him and then I would have then I would have that value contrast and I could keep that background dark and his face light and I would have my value contrast but since I'm doing the reverse the reverse has to happen with the background and and that's fine but it's being aware of that when you're painting somebody or painting different flesh tones and things like that is uh it's important so uh anyway that's what i got for you guys uh today and i'll try to figure out my uh camera situation it's i swear something always breaks down i don't understand how a computer program that i use Two hours a week can give me such problem, but whatever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trooper, and as long as you can hear me, you can hear these sweet, sultry, bassy voice, and um, see me paint. Then that's that's all that really matters. You don't need to see uh, my junky studio, okay? Um. So that's that. Uh, if anybody has any last minute questions, comments, or wanna tell me how your favorite YouTube celebrity paints better than me, uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> All right, hey, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Um, so that's, that's basically my pass, like a first color pass at this composition. Um, from here, I would play up different ideas for the background, uh, such as the, the giant squid, or a space nebula, or, or, or something like that. Um, but having a main light source uh, affect 
the rest of the composition is is always fun so that you don't have to like knowing where that light is coming from whether it's coming from outside the scene or inside the scene will impact all of your decisions all of your color choices um or everything from skin tone to clothing to uh how the, the temperature of the shadows in your environment everything will depend on the type of lighting you choose for your piece so um anyway uh that's what i got Yeah, Oliver, see you next week. And uh thank you guys for 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 joining me. And uh let me save this file. And so I guess next week we'll do something new or I can just work up some other variations on this. I never really know week to week what's going to hold somebody's attention. I always kind of think that if I uh spend too much time on one thing, people might go, oh, He's still painting that guy's mohawk? Come on, man. You know, anyway. All right, so I will talk to you all later.